Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakakwidash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a quick lesson uh, touching on this article uh, that I came across, uh, pretty much going into um, the net zero climate action you know, that these devils are working on, you know, in efforts to uh, fight global warming, so they say, right? And when you look into the uh, the beginnings of global warming and what actually uh, started it, it was these devils, man, when they transitioned from a lot of hand labor to machinery, okay, to burning coal, gas, and uh, fossil fuels, man. You see, but now here it is. They want to come up with a, um, a remedy for the damage that they've done. You know, and this is why, you know, they're pursuing uh, an agenda to control what we consume and, you know, how we produce. You know, this is why they're pursuing um, uh, depopulation agenda. You know, they're saying that there's too many cows uh, trying to stop us from eating meat. That's why they're creating, uh, you know, the synthetic meat. You see, this is this is this is their this is their way of trying to uh, bring the emissions down to zero. Including carbon dioxide, which is you know, not too wise because, you know, carbon dioxide is a critical uh, greenhouse gas. Okay, that supports life on earth, from plant life to animal life to human life. But again, we understand that these damn devils want to depopulate. Why? Because they're the harbingers of death, man. But ultimately, you know, what this is going to cause is uh, uh, if they go through, you know, with this uh, with this wicked agenda, which is likely they will, Highly likely, you know, a global famine is, is imminent. And we already see a famine brewing, you know, but this here would, would bring, it out, bring it around full circle. You know, and honestly, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, famine is a reality. This is something that's going to come to this planet Earth in the days to come in a whole new way. You see, famine is one of those scourges that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to send upon you proud people, man. Starting with you Babylonians, man. Okay? But you better believe it's going to be global. Global starvation, man. The, the Bible goes into famine. So you better believe that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to allow this man to pursue this wicked work. You know, but we know that he's only going to allow him to go so far. You know, so through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'a Shem, Yahweh Shai, the first scripture I want to get before we get this article real quick is the book of 2 Ezra. Uh, yeah, let me get 16. <clears throat> In verse 22, and it reads, For many of them that dwell upon earth show perish of famine, you see? Many of them, many, many people are going to perish of famine. The lack of bread and water. And the other that escape the hunger show the sword destroy. You see, so if you escape this, this famine, you better believe you're going to get caught up by another scourge that's going to be sent by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. See? Because remember, there's going to be teeth of wild beasts. There's going to be pestilence. 
silver unrest. <laughs> you see people invading one another with the sword for a lack of bread. It's going to be dangerous out here, man. And ultimately, that sword and its perfection are those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. And you got to be a real special proud devil, okay, for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai to preserve you for one of those. You see, but the, the but the reality of this thing is a hey, famine is coming one way or another. And it makes perfect sense that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai will use his sword to bring it, man. His sword being who? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Let's get this article real quick. Now, this is from Natural News. And it's dated March 8th, 2023. So it's from yesterday. Right. And the title reads, Net Zero Policies will leave half the world's population without nothing to eat, researchers warn. Right, let's read into this a little bit. Right, Half of the world's population may starve soon thanks to the net zero policies promoted and propagated by climate alarmists across the globe. You see, this thing is looking like a reality. The United Nations website defined net zero as cutting greenhouse gas emissions to as close to zero as possible with the remaining emissions reabsorbed from the atmosphere by oceans and forests. According to a paper published by CO2 Coalition, the net zero initiatives of governments and private organizations are scientifically invalid and will lead to worldwide impoverishment and starvation if implemented. You see, and we already know that they have a wicked agenda to depopulate, man. What do you think that Georgia Guidestone was all about? Which was magically destroyed. See? Population 500 million or less. And we're well over that right now. <laughs> you see? Well over that. The paper's authors were Professor William Happer from Princeton University, Professor Richard Lindzen of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Gregory Wrightstone. They specialize in climate research and strongly refute the climate emergency. Cult narrative while warning of the devastating consequences of increasingly radical climate policies. Right, because to bring the carbon emissions down to zero, uh, carbon dioxide specifically, again, is going to bring uh, 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 deadly, it's gonna, deadly repercussions are going to come from that. Let's continue on. Humans need green plants to exist and prosper. Plants get the carbon they need from carbon dioxide in the air. Other essential nutrients, water, nitrogen, Phosphorus, potassium, etc., come from the soil. Plants grow better with several times higher CO2 concentrations than present values. As far as green, uh, green plants are concerned, CO2 is part of their daily bread, like water, sunlight, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other essential elements without co2 there would be no photosynthesis no food and no human on or other life you see <laughs> so now this whole net zero um uh this whole net zero climate action okay is starting to you, you can now you can see what this thing is really about you see because these devils they've already been uh, you know, targeting the farmers and, uh, you know, the livestock, you know, in efforts to, quote unquote, supposedly lower the greenhouse effect. Right. You literally had that devil, Hell Gates, mention how uh, the population must decrease in order to lower the, uh, the global warming issue. What do you think that whole Capri Sun was about? 
Why do you think people are going back to the spiritual world suddenly at an immaculate rate? See, this is all part of their wicked, diabolical NWO, man. <laughs> you know? This is what this is all about. Because scripture going to, man, these devils, they don't do good willingly, man. If they do good, hey, they're not, they're not doing it willingly. This is the devil that the Bible speaks of. See? Like I said, uh, when I first opened up through the spirit and the power of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, here it is. These devils, okay, are the ones that created this problem. Okay, with their uh, whole, you know, industrial revolution, man. As a matter of fact, let's go here real quick. I actually have that up, right? On Wikipedia, greenhouse gas, right? Check this out. I mean, we know this. You know, but let's just get it. Right? Human activities since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, right, around 1750. All right, now this is well after, uh, this is a couple hundred years after what? The Renaissance period. Okay? So we know evil E, the so-called white man Esau Edom, right? He's behind this, right? So let's continue on. Have increased the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide by, by over 50%. In 1750, to, to uh, Salaki, let me read that again, right? Have increased the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide by over 50% from 280 ppm, which is parts per million, in 1750 to 421 parts per million in 2022. The last time the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide was this high was over 3 million years ago. Supposedly, this damn devil, evil, evil E, throwing his numbers out there, three million years ago. Okay, Esau, this increase has occurred despite the absorption of more than half of the emissions by various natural carbon sinks in the carbon cycle. At current greenhouse gas emission rates, temperatures could increase by two degrees Celsius, which is 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, which the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says is the upper limit to avoid dangerous levels by 2050. Now here is the pride of these devils. They think they're going to be still uh, <laughs> destroying the planet Earth in 2050, right? This is what they think in their minds. That these devils, man, the scriptures go into it. They think that their houses shall continue forever. These proud demons, man. From the way things are looking with these prophecies jumping off the pages, I speak as a man. I don't see 2050 for you demons. Let's continue on. The vast majority of, anthro of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions come from combustion of fossil fuels, principally coal, petroleum, including oil and natural gas, with additional contributions from cement, manufacturing, fertilizer production, deforestation, you see, and other changes in land use. Who's behind all of these things? Esau Edom, the so-called white man. And deforestation, deforestation should stand out like a sore thumb. Well, this devil has cut down the trees at an alarming rate which is going to automatically create a, a, a greenhouse effect. See, but here, here it is. This damn demon has the solution, right? He has the solution to bring things uh, <laughs> back to normal. You see, by, by having you eat bugs, okay, and synthetic meat, and for you to stop producing. You know? This is the solution. See? This whole uh, zero, uh, this whole zero, uh, net zero agenda is, is to bring the population down, man. This is what this thing is all about. This is what this man's 
This is what this man's plans are. But hey, again, it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai using this demon. Hey, to fulfill biblical prophecy, man. See? Scripture goes into how their hurtful works, they must be fulfilled. In 2 Ezra, it's the 15th chapter. Let's go there. And Lord willing, I'm going to leave that article in the description box for you, Aki Amanakwa. There's a little bit more in there. But let me go ahead. Salakia. The book of 2 Ezra is chapter 15. And I'm going to start at verse 5 and it reads, Behold, saith the Lord, I will, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. See, so ultimately, it's Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai using evil E. Okay? To bring these calamities, man. Evil E, he was built to take peace from the earth. What's that, Revelation 6 and 4? This man is designed to do these things. He is the sword of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. And you better believe this damn devil is going to create uh, all manners of mayhem, okay, before he's shaking out of power, man. Let's continue on. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. You see, and why is that? Because who's in power? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. The wicked are bearing rule right now, man. This is why the people are mourning. The people are mourning right about now because the wicked are ruling. And we're going to reach the climax of this man's wickedness in the days to come. In the form of this man's, in the form of this man's wicked agenda that he's pursuing, that he's not going to be able to crown. Pursuing the biblical prophecy, man. Scripture says, what, in the book of Job, when you're about to fill your belly, <clears throat> how about Shemel Shah is going to come raining upon you, man? For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You see, so how about Shemel Shah is going to allow this man to wreak havoc? But you better believe this damn demon's going to be visited. This kingdom is not going to continue to flourish when it's moving in the same spirit as Sodom and Gomorrah, which was left as an example, pursuing the second Peter. Let me get that real quick. Pursuing the second Peter. No, this place has a date with destiny, but before the Yahweh, before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai visits it, in the form of them ICBM missiles and them laser beams from the chariots, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to choke this place out. He's going to choke it out, man. Scripture goes into the miseries that are going to be done to you proud devils, man. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that after this, Lord willing. Let's get this real quick. Um, the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 6, and it reads, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, man. It rained fire and brimstone on top of Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, and it's been, it's been uh, quote unquote, scientifically proven. Okay, for all you uh, <laughs> science heads out there. Okay, the highest sulfur rate on the planet Earth is in Sodom and Gomorrah, man. How do you think we know that? Evil E, the evil E, man. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man went and searched that place out. And confirmed that it's true. So there was a concentrated heat, all right, that hit that place, man. Hey, a divine heat. Hey, that same divine heat that's coming here, man, the Babylon the Great. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, 
making them an example, right? And sample, which means example, unto those that after should live ungodly. Babylon the Great has walked the steps of Sodom and Gomorrah. Actually, Babylon the Great, Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, has outdone Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, this place is Sodom and Gomorrah on steroids, man. So, if Yahweh Bashim al Shai visited Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, for, for less than what this place is producing, you know this place has a date with destiny, man. Hey, that's without a doubt. But again, those miseries must come first. Let's get that. Let's get that. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 8. Those miseries are going to come. Where do you think those miseries, what form uh, are those miseries going to come in? Pestilence, teeth of wild beasts, uproars of the people, man. Earthquakes. <laughs> you see, hey, the famine, that famine. Hey, that famine, like the beloved brother in the camp says, is the double barrel shotgun. That's a double barrel shotgun right there, man. Because you, hey, famine ain't nothing nice. To starve out, hey, that's nothing nice. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 50, and it reads, For many great miseries <clears throat> shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. And there's no uh, more proud creature, all right, than Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. And all you people joined unto him. Okay, hey, you're going to meet the same fate. What scripture say? Isaiah 13 and 15. All that are joined unto him, what? Should be thrust through. You see? Pride. That's something that Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai hates, man. Why do you think it's being expounded on here? Because they have walked in great pride. Pride, man. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai hates a proud look. And pursuing the Jeremiah, uh, this damn devil, evil E, is the most proud, man. Followed by Moab, all right? The Chinese man, which is coined as, uh, what's the, what scripture say? He's exceedingly proud. <laughs> it says, Moab is exceedingly proud. You see that? Hey, that pride, hey. The matter of fact, let me get this word pride real quick. No, let me get this word, uh, Salaki, a misery. Let's get misery real quick. Real quick. <clears throat> misery. Misery, a state or feeling of great distress or discomfort of mind or body. You people are going to be distressed. You people are going to be discomforted, unhappy. Anguish, affliction, suffering, torture. You see it? Hell. No IUIC. There's no such thing as hell of the underworld where you burn forever. No. Okay? Hell as in the condition. Hell as in the grave, man. Get it right. Right? Pain. Grief. Poverty. Heartache. Hey, low spirits. Hey, you get it. Hey, one, hey, one more. Whoa. Whoa. Many great miseries, man, are coming to you people. You see? Let's go here. Let's go back. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra 15 and jump down real quick. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Khan, this is what I want. In verse 56, and it reads, Like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith the Lord, even so shall Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, do unto thee. And shall deliver thee into mischief, man. 
See, you people are going to be delivered into all forms of mischief. And mischief you can't get out of, man. Mischief you cannot get out of. You people are going to be running for your life in the days to come. Yahweh Ba Shem is going to visit this place, man. Hey, and he's going to use this damn demon that he has in power right now to, to bring a lot of these calamities forth. You see? And then ultimately visit this devil. Continuing on, right? My children, Salakia, thy children shall die of hunger. You see that? This famine is a reality. And thou shalt fall through the sword. Okay, which is a killing instrument, man. But scripture goes into how you're better off uh, falling by the sword, man, than getting, than getting caught up in that famine. I believe that's Lamentations, if I'm not, if I'm correct. Lamentations, um, let me, let me see if I can get that real quick. I believe that's Lamentations 3 or 4. I believe it's Lamentations 4. If I'm correct, let me see here. Uh, yeah, nope, let me see. It's further up here. Con, the book of Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 9, and it reads... They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. Why, Lord? For these pine away, stricken through for the want of the fruits of the failed, man. Right, you rot away, man. And the phone chimed in. That famine, man, you rot away, man. Slowly but surely lose strength. <laughs> you lose, you, you lose, you be losing your, your your breath. It becomes hard to breathe, man. Your body becomes so weak. You can barely move, man. Until you just black out of there. Hey, that's horrible, man. That famine is nothing nice. And scripture goes into it. We brought it out. We opened up with it. In 2 Ezra 16 and 22. Many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, man. This thing is a reality. Let's go back. Let's continue on in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15. And verse 57 again. Thy children shall die of hunger and thou shall fall through the sword. Thy cities shall be broken down and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. You see? And again, that sword in its perfection are those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man, which are going to rain upon Babylon, pursuing the biblical prophecy. They that be in the mountain shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for very hunger of bread and thirst of water, man. Hey, this is this is end time prophecy, man. This is what's coming. And there's going to be nowhere to run. There's going to be nowhere to hide. See? See? Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is bringing these scourges and calamities upon you proud people. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you got individuals out there talking about, oh, there's nothing you can do. What about you? What about you? Well, we, as Akiyam and Agwaf, hey, we trust in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. See, we've, we've returned back to our power and our truth and sincerity. And we serve our power in our truth and sincerity. And scripture goes into what's that Isaiah 65? The Lord said that his servants shall eat, man. This is why we're not worried about what, what's coming and what evil he's doing. 
Because we know ultimately, Abba Rathaza, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh got us, man, as long as we stay on the course. The, you people should be afraid, very afraid. What's that? Revelations 12 and 12. Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. See, we are rejoicing at these things. When we hear when we hear about situations like this, we rejoice, man. Hey, we rejoice. Why? Because this means the kingdom of heaven is that much more closer, man. Because prophecy says that these things must come. Global famine must come. You see? Death and destruction must come. The pestilence must come. There's no way around it. Hey, that karagma, that C-hip, that M-O-T-B, that mark of the B-E-A-S-T must come. But we're going to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shaya's Akiyama Nagwaf. We're not worrying about no evil E. We know who controls them. Let's close out here. Let's get that Isaiah 65 and 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 13, it reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Are two thirds of you so kind Negroes, Latinos, the Native Americans serving the Lord? Are you doing anything for the Lord or for his ministry? I think not. Okay? I think not. So guess what? You fall into the category of being hungry, thirsty, and ashamed, man. You see? But those of us that, hey, serve the Lord to the best of our ability, you know? Those of us, us men that have been called to do this work, to stay on the front line. Okay? And for you men, women, and children that do the best you can, you know, to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, hey, guess what? We qualify the hope. We qualify the hope that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to deal with us in these latter days. And we know our power is not a liar. That's one thing we do know. Because he put our asses dead smack into captivity like he said he was going to do. If we transgressed, if we were disobedient, if we sinned against him, and we did, and we are in the situation he said he will put us in. So if he says that he's going to be there for us, if we serve him, hey, we can bet our dollar, every bit of our dollar, every dollar we got, okay? We can bet our bottom dollar, as they say in the world, okay? That he got us, man. We could put our money on it that he got us. You see, hey, but this thing is a reality, man. Famine is coming. Famine is coming. Hey, Lord willing, it comes sooner than later so we can get to the kingdom of heaven, man. You know, so, hey, Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwath were edified. I'm going to leave that um, article in the uh, description box for you Akiyam and Akwath. I'm also going to leave um, another piece of information uh, that I didn't bring out. For the sake of, uh, you know, this devil, you know, honing in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the description box for you, Aki and Akwaf. You know, pretty much going into this uh, climate change uh, agenda. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Ka Halayim La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakah Kwadash. Shalom.